In this video, I'm going to show you how we keep our content team in sync and how we efficiently produce more than 100 pieces of content per week. And we do this without all of the chaos that causes repeat errors and just frustration and drag in your content workflow. So I'm in the content engine database. This is an automated content system that I built out in Airtable that also uses Zapier and Google Drive. And here in the workflow tab, we're able to define all of the different workflows that we have for content that comes into the system, what channels any given piece of content needs to be distributed to, final media type so everyone knows what the final asset should look like and whether or not a given workflow requires copy, an image, media, and a title. So obviously YouTube videos need copy or a description. They also need a thumbnail, they need media, and they also need a title. And then we're also able to define any guidelines or SOPs that need to be followed for any given piece of content so that as our team is working on, say, vertical videos, they have the guidelines that they need to execute this efficiently. Now, what's great about defining all of this up front is that it's not just a definition in this system here, as we are going through and publishing a lot of content, I can come over to the in progress section and the overview. And this is gonna show me all of the content in the system that is currently being worked on. It's gonna give me a thumbnail so I can reference it quite easily, a publish date, the brand, the workflow. And again, here, this workflow is helping me define what is that final media type and what is needed to get this content ready to go. So at a quick glance here, I can see that this content still needs an image and a video. This content still needs a title. This one needs copy, image, video, and a title. And so as I start to evaluate all of the content in the system, I can come to this overview and really start to get a sense of when things need to be published and what still needs to be completed in order to get it done. And then I can see just the media here where I can assign it to a video editor. And so we can see here that C22, this content for a YouTube video, it has no status. And so if we come back to the overview here, we're gonna see that C22 still requires that video to be approved. And so if I come over here and and let's just say that I assign this to a video editor and then they ultimately completed it and I moved it to done. It's gonna fall out of this media view here. You're gonna see it's gonna disappear. And if I come back over to the overview, I'm gonna see that C22 no longer requires the video because it has been completed. And now I can see and just focus in on what needs to be done from here. So if I'm the project manager responsible for making sure that all of this content gets out on time successfully with my team, then this is gonna allow me to have that bird's eye view and then laser focus in on the items that need to get complete and reach out to that person or coordinate with that person to make sure it gets done. And what's cool about these workflows is that these are dynamic values. They actually serve a purpose. So if we look here that for these vertical videos that it looks like we need a title, if I were to come back over to the workflows and say that vertical videos don't need a title for whatever reason, if I come back over to the system, we're gonna see that all of those little T's that represent the title have disappeared. Whereas if we come back to those workflows and add that back, we're going to see that those T's are now here and they are required for publication, which is great when we go to actually schedule content. Whoever is responsible for actually publishing that content, like what is going out today? What is going out tomorrow? What does that overall schedule look like? Let's say we were going to schedule something for the next day and I come over to the Today tab to look at all the content. This system is going to show me what is ready to be published and what still needs to be done. So if I'm responsible for actually publishing all of this content, then I can reach out to the team or the project manager and I can get all of this done ahead of time. If I'm looking at that tomorrow tab, if we schedule something for tomorrow, let's move that actually to tomorrow. And I come to this tomorrow tab, we can see this piece of content is ready, but if it weren't, I could go ahead and work with my team to make sure that is done. And so just to demonstrate the dynamic nature of the Airtable database, let's go look at C43. It looks like it needs a video and a title. So if I jump over to titles and I look for C43, I can put how to scale your content. I can mark that done. I can jump over to the media. I can look for 43. I can say that's done. And now if I jump back over to the today tab and look for C43, we'll now see that that content is now ready to go. So having a system like this that can help you stay organized and then keep track of all the different workflows, where things are supposed to be published, what requirements do I need for that content to actually push it out the door? Do I need video, copy, a title? All of those things can be stored within the system so that your team can be hyper efficient and keep everybody coordinated. Everybody knows the due date. Everybody knows what's to be done. And so everything can get done on time without all of the headaches. So there you go. I hope you found this video valuable. Make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. It lets me know what's most valuable to you. And if you're interested in building out your own automated content system in Airtable, make sure to check out the next video that's up popping up on your screen. It's gonna walk you through how to build out your own system, how to think it through, how to connect up all of the automations. Check out that video. I'll see you there.